Hi everybody, my name is Pastor Dave Myers. I'm the lead pastor here at Royal Oak Victory Church. And thanks for joining in on the message today. My prayer is that it'll strengthen your faith, encourage your heart, and speak something powerful into your life. If it turns out to be a blessing, would you please consider sharing it with someone else as one of our passions here at ROVC is to get the word out to as many people as possible. And so without further ado, let's jump right into today's message. So this life is given, everyone a present, beautiful, shiny and new. Everyone but you. Golden ribbons, diamonds, line everyone's path that leads to wide open doors. Everyone's but yours. Wide open doors. Oh. Isn't that just super cute? Makes you feel like going out and hugging a hedgehog this Christmas. But um, anyway, it's good to see all of you here to our Christmas Eve service. We're so glad that you have graced our house here and to celebrate together the uh, joyous uh, most fantastic news ever told, and that is the news of Jesus. And um, yeah, it's just wonderful to see all of you here today. And um, like I say, I have to segue um, from the video we just saw, which was a uh, hedgehog, and so um, let me do that uh, for you. If you are going to um, hu hug a hedgehog this Christmas, you will need to have plenty of these, and um, uh, these are called packing peanuts. They're, uh, they're really just pieces of styrofoam, nothing special, nothing spectacular, but really when you think about it, they are the perfect gift um, for hedgehog. And someone informed me in the earlier service, porcupines as well. So, and there might be a lot of other things. But, um, you know, they are simple and small, but they're perfect. And um, I say all that to say, isn't that the way Christmas is anyway? That oftentimes it's not the fanciest gift. It's not the most elaborate and expensive gift that ends up being the best ones. But rather many times the best gifts are the humble ones. They really are. I know that's been true of me. You know, one of the um, best gifts Clarice uh, bought me uh, this year, not for Christmas, but in the summer, uh, was a pair of socks. Now, I, I know that sounds strange, and you probably think it's even stranger that he would bring his socks to church, but, uh, but she bought me these socks, and uh, you know, they're fantastic, they're durable, they're comfortable. There's the other one I'm looking for here. Um, but the neat thing about these socks is they have a scripture verse on the bottom of them. It's Psalm 23.2. And some of you who know your scripture will know what that psalm is. That's the psalm that says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And so I love these socks because whenever I put them on, I know I'm going to have a great day, right? Um, that God's going to lead me towards some green pastures, still water. He's going to restore my soul. I mean, they're simple, uh, but they work. They're simple, but they're perfect for me. You know, um, not only um, do I uh, like simple gifts, Clarice 
by the way. She, she likes her simple gifts too, and she'll probably kill me for saying this, but I already said it in the first service. That's why I know she'll kill me. But you know, one of her, if you, if you want uh, the most thoughtful, considerate gift for her that you can ever buy her is, uh, is a bag of these, okay? Now, I know you can't see what they are, but they are um, Joe's Tasty Pumpkin Seeds. And, you know, it's just, she, it's, I know it sounds different, but um, she loves these. They have to be the unsalted kind, though. She loves them. I mean, um, she can't get enough of them. And so, you know, when I think of maybe buying her other things, like diamond earrings, <laughs> or, or a new car, or, or a romantic trip to Paris, I just remind myself, no, she likes the pumpkin seeds. <laughs> Now, I know what some of you are saying, that's just cheap. But anyway, how many know it's, it's, it's simple, but it works. It's simple, but it works. And, you know, really, when you think about it, that's exactly what the message of Christmas is all about. It was a simple, humble, lowly gift, but it worked. And you see that in the words that the angel came to tell the shepherds. They said, don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, the rescuer, a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognize him by this miracle sign. You will find a babe wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. And, um, and I'll t I don't know about you, but when I think of, of simple gifts and humble gifts and lowly gifts, I mean, that's one right there. Uh, the savior of the world, not born in a palace. He didn't appear in a mansion. He didn't come to earth in a temple or even a regular house. But rather, he came in a shack round back, surrounded by a bunch of animals uh, Jesus was a simple gift, a simple and humble gift, so simple and unimpressive that everyone except for a handful of shepherds and a few wise men from the east missed him. King Herod and the entire political crowd of that day, they missed him. Uh, the Pharisees and the religious leaders, they missed him. Why, even many of the common people of the day, the people in Bethlehem, the people who lived there, not only lived there, but who were visiting there because of the census, they all missed him, completely missed him. And you know, one of the reasons why is because he showed up different than what they ever expected the Messiah would be like. The Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah king. Uh, one who would come riding into Jerusalem on a white horse and valiantly deliver them from the tyranny of Rome. That's what they were looking for. That's what they were expecting. And Jesus was none of that. Uh, he didn't come riding in on a horse. What? He was laying in a manger. The real term for that is feeding trough. Um, he uh, didn't come with the promise of deliverance and liberation from the Roman government, but rather his purpose and mission was far deeper than that, a deeper mission. And you see that in the words of the angel. Uh, they said to the shepherds, don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere, for today in Bethlehem, a rescuer. Let's say that word together. Rescuer, rescuer, rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. And you know, this word rescuer here, it's a beautiful word. In the original language, it's soteia. It literally means savior, deliverer, preserver, redeemer. And what it tells me is that although Jesus arrived in a very small and humble way, uh, he came as God's very perfect gift to us. He's a perfect gift. Small but perfect. A perfect gift for all of us. And you know, I've shared this uh, before, but I'm going to do it one more time. You know, it was about a month ago. I was up one morning spending some time in prayer and I was specifically praying about Christmas, Christmas here at ROVC, 
you know, what events we would have, maybe what messages we might share with all of you. And as I was sitting there, just waiting on the Lord, suddenly this sentence came to me and um, just came right out of the blue. And so I picked up my pen, I wrote it in my journal. And, 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 and this is what it said. Um, it says, Christmas came at an inconvenient time to an unlikely group of people in an unexpected way with an indescribable gift that changed the world forever. That's the sentence, the statement that came to me. And so I thought, wow, there is enough meat in that one statement uh, to go through the whole month. And so that's what we've been doing all December. We've been unpacking that statement. Christmas came at an inconvenient time. Uh, it was a time of great uncertainty and chaos and oppression and fear, much like it is today. Christmas came to an unlikely group of people, right? I mean, a handful of shepherds and three pagan wise men and, and, and a teenager, who became impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Christmas arrived in a very unexpected way. A savior, the savior of the world, the God who says I hold the oceans in the palm of my hands and I measure the universe between my thumb and my forefinger. The savior of the world born in a stable, lying in a feeding trough. And then lastly, it came Christmas with an indescribable gift that would change the world forever. It really is quite amazing to think about it. The reason why Jesus came, him being the indescribable gift, it's just like the angel said, he's our savior, deliverer, our pres preserver. He is our rescuer. The very one who would come and rescue us from darkness and fear. There's been a lot of fear in the world lately. A lot of it. The very one who would come and um, lift us out of depression and anxiety. The very one who would forgive us of our sins and, and our shame and our guilt. Jesus came to rescue us from all of that. Small but powerful. A humble gift but a perfect gift. I guess the question is, is have you received that gift? You know, I'm reminded of another classic Christmas verse. Isaiah 9 verse 2. It says, the people who walked in darkness will see a great light. And those who live in the land of the deep darkness, a light will shine. And you know, if there was ever a commentary of the day in which we live now, it's that verse right there. Um, the, uh, the darkness, the deep darkness, one translation calls it darkness and deep shadows. It sounds a whole lot like the hour in which we are living today. And yet what's so wonderful about all of this is that despite the darkness and the shadows, despite the chaos and the fear, God gives us a promise of hope. He says the people, how many people do we have here tonight? Turn to the person next to you say, I think he's talking about you. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. A great light. And you know, I'll tell you right now that regardless of your political persuasions, that great light is not Justin Trudeau. I knew I'd get it. It's not Pierre Polyev. It's not Joe Biden. It's not Donald Trump. It's not even Elon Musk. And I know I just ruined some of your Christmases by saying that. But rather the great light Isaiah is speaking of is none other than who? Who? Jesus. Say that a little louder, who? Jesus. Jesus, God's indescribable gift to us. That's right. He's got it, man. He's got the spirit of Christmas. It says, for unto us a child is born, a son is given. What is that? That's a lowly, humble, packing peanut, right? God's gift to us. And yet contained in the person of Christ is the very fulfillment of all that we seek and all that we long for. Isaiah says it. A few verses later, he says, and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How many know there's a whole lot of power there? A whole lot of power. 
And that Jesus came to be our counselor that we can look to when we are troubled and confused. How many have ever been through a confusing time in life? I've been through multiple, but he is our counselor. It says that he's our mighty God who we can go to whenever we're feeling weak and overwhelmed. And you might be feeling like that even tonight. Maybe this last whole month, maybe this last whole two and a half years you've felt like that. He's a mighty God who can deliver us from that. He's a loving father whom we can run to, who embraces us when we feel betrayed, abandoned, or alone. He's our prince of peace. Isn't that awesome? Prince of peace when we're surrounded by waves of anxiety and fear. And you know, best of all, he is our loving Savior who comes to rescue us. He's our rescuer. He rescues us when we are battling things that are far bigger and stronger than ourselves. That Jesus is the perfect, indescribable gift. That's what Christmas is all about. And you know what's so awesome about it is that that gift, the gift of Jesus, the gift of Christ, he's absolutely free. He's not cheap, but he's free. And so that means he doesn't come with 10 or 20 or 40% off like you'll see in a few days from now with all the sales. Uh, He's not zero money down and ho, ho, ho the payments until 2024. And how many have seen a whole lot of that? That Jesus is completely entirely free to whoever is hungry, whoever is humble, whoever is hopeful enough to open their hearts and invite him in. God's indescribable gift. And it's just like Jesus himself said in Revelation 3.20. He says, behold, I'm standing at the door knocking If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come to you and feast with you and you will feast with me. What a wonderful verse of scripture. And you know, there's three things I see here. The first one is that Jesus is outside wanting to get in. You say, well, why would God want to get into my life? Well, isn't that the message of Christmas? They shall call him Emmanuel, and that is God with us. He's wanting to come in and be with us. Secondly, he's letting us know by knocking on the door of our hearts. So right now, Jesus is trying to get your attention. He's knocking. He's knocking on your door. You say, well, I I don't hear him. Uh, Well, maybe the reason we don't hear him is just because of how Christmas plays itself out. There's just so much clamor and clutter and noise, right? So many parties and so many things and the lists just get longer and longer. And I understand that because I have long lists too. But I want to say that sometime, sometime in this season of Christmas, maybe it would be good for all of us just to pause for a second, pull ourselves away into a quiet place and listen because there's the voice that is coming from heaven. The voice of of Jesus is, is calling you. He's knocking on your heart. He's telling you, I want to come in. I love you. I'm your redeemer, I'm your rescuer, I'm here for you. You don't have to do this all by yourself. I am your mighty God. You know, the third thing I see here in this verse is that if we do that, if we open our hearts and our lives to him, that's when the party really begins. Because he says it, he says, he will feast with us and we will feast with him. And so my prayer is, you know, Lord, come and and let's, let's pull out all the stops. Let's have the feast of all feasts. Jesus, come into my life and into my world and into my mess. You might say, well, why would Jesus ever want to come into my mess? That's why he was sent in the first place. He said, healthy people don't need physicians. That's why he came. He came to redeem us from our mess. And so maybe you're here tonight and, you know, this past year has been a tough one. 
Maybe there's been a lot of loss. Maybe there's been a lot of disappointment, even some betrayal. Maybe your marriage that was on the rocks before the pandemic, now the wheels have fallen off. It's hit the rocks. Maybe your life is not what you wanted it or ever expected it to be. You know, the answer to it all is God's indescribable gift, the gift of Jesus. And my prayer for all of us is that we would invite him in. We'd open our hearts and say, Lord, come and have your way with me. And so let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the wonderful gift of your son. And Lord, in a world that seems darker and darker, in an hour that seems more confusing than ever, Father, we open ourselves up to you, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful counselor, we open ourselves up to the, 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 your mighty hand and we ask that you would come into our hearts right now. And I want you to do that. If you've never done that before, just ask Christ to come. And Father, we invite you into our lives, into our Christmas. And Father, we look forward to the feast that you have for us. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the message today and I hope that it lifted and encouraged you in some way. If you made a decision to follow Christ today, we would love to know about it. And the best way to do that, to let us know, is by heading over to our website at rovc.ca and clicking on the tab that says connect with us. Also, if this message was a blessing to you, we'd love it if you could get the word out by liking and subscribing or even giving to our ministry. If you're interested in making a donation, you can do so by heading again to our website and clicking on the Give tab. Again, thanks for joining us and may God richly bless you.